The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Eight of the best scholastic players from St. Louis Chess Club take on eight of the very best from Zugdiri Chess School in the nation of Georgia. Last year, the margin was razor thin, four and a half to three and a half. To clinch the match, St. Louis had the victory. But today, Zugdiri, they're back. And they're angry, they're hungry, they want revenge against these eight competitors you see before you in the world-famous St. Louis Chess Club Tournament Hall. And today, it's going to be a lot of action. One round, winner take all. First to four and a half is the victor. So come on into the studio and join us for a while. Hello, chess fans. Ben Simon here, along with the most entertaining man in chess, Mike Cummer, once again. Mike, are you pumped for today? Oh, yeah. I, I've been waiting for this for a year. They've been, they've been bugging me all, uh, all six months and just saying, hey, we got to play, we got to play. And I said, fine, let's do it. Easter weekend, can't wait. See if they can raise us from the dead. The big return match on the internet. Before we get started, let's take a look at the roster that Zugdidi Chess School is fielding all the way over in Europe. We have Georgi Kukulashvili, Georgi Nakopia, Nikolozi Shamatava, Georgi Sartanya, who, by the way, is the only returning player from their field last year. Maya Bekvaya and Grigoli Bekvaya, Nika Kimularia, and Dmitry Antilava. Now, these, are, these players all have FIDE ratings, and it's interesting to note, I think about half of the field from St. Louis has FIDE ratings, the other half, of course, has U.S. chess ratings. But once again, this year, by the numbers only, we are outmatched in every match. <laughs> Mike, what do you think about that? It's all good. We got our whole returning uh, roster coming back that, of course, won last year, so... Uh... Let's Rainers, take a look. Rainers don't mean nothing. Right, and we proved them wrong last year. I Rizal, our captain who did such a great job last year. Ashish Panda, one of the club regulars. He goes to all the lectures. Alex Zhang, Aaron Lin, Aiden Huang, <clears throat> pardon me, Aiden Huang, Selena Zhao, who is Iris's little sister, Newman Shen, and Adi Panda. What do you have to say about this field here, Mike? Uh, well, Ira Zhao, our captain, recently won the... Uh 2019 Missouri Scholastic State Championship. That doesn't have the same ring as the 1998 Missouri Scholastic State Champion, but it's still a heck of an accomplishment. And uh, I'm thinking she's going to lead the team to victory once again this year. So the games are going on right now on leechess.org. Let's take a look at our format. We have one round, eight games going on at the same time. It's unrated over the internet. Friendly, unrated, eight versus eight. Our board one faces their board one all the way down the line, so on and so forth. All of the games are worth one point. So with eight points on the line, the first to four and a half clinches the match. In the event of a 4-4 tie, the match will be a draw. There will be no playoff. The games are game in 25 with a 10 second increment. So let's waste no more time. Let's get to the action, Mike, with our board one. All right, so Iris has the uh, black pieces against their team captain, uh, Georgie. So let's see how this uh, game uh, proceeds. All right, e4, c5, the Sicilian, knight c3. So when they play this, they could be going into the uh, Grand Prix attack. So usually I play a6 here just to stop any uh, potential nonsense, but instead they decide to get their uh, bishop being channeled here. So uh, Iris does the same. E5, I really don't like this move by Iris because it really weakens the uh, D5 square. Keep in mind I am a 1700 and I am not using a computer, so <laughs> I'll take all my analysis with a grain of salt. And I'm a 1500 and I'm not using a computer, <laughs> yeah. but I might cheat from time to time. All right, we might need it. Knight h3. Hey, but by the way, before we yes. continue, I gotta tell you guys, if you wanna follow these games live on leechess.org, the simplest way to do it is to extend the description on the YouTube video. All of the St. Louis players' screen names that they're playing under today are on leechess.org. Just go and search for the names, mm -hmm. open up those eight tabs. That's what we're doing, so join in on the fun. All right, that's all I gotta say. Excellent, okay. So uh, Iris continues her development. I guess they're both looking to uh, the castle, but okay, so he brings out the old f4 here. 
So Iris has two options, either take it or a D6. All right, so she chooses D6. Castles, castles. So I don't know. So even though white has uh, more advanced pawns here, I think uh, his king's pretty safe, while Iris might be having some trouble here. Let's see, knight f2. All right, continue the development. G4, very, very ambitious. So threatening f5 here. So does Iris have to take? She does. Take back, knight e5. Threatening the, uh, the G pawn, putting more pressure on it, obviously. Georgie has two defenders. And that's where we are right now. So I'm going to give an edge to, uh, to white here, but nothing that Iris can't overcome. I mean, right. you know, white should theoretically have the, uh, the upper hand, you know, after the opening. So a slight edge for uh, white. All right, so on to uh, the next game here. All right, Ashish Panda as white taking on Georgi Nakopia. All right, the board's already flipped. I like it. Yeah, it's nice how that works. Everything's <laughs> yes. working in our favor today. Right. Bishop to d3, d5. Ooh, so, so Ashish decides to take it. There's Ashish uh, right there. Knight e2. So Ashish is not trying to blow this guy, you know, off the board or anything. So I guess that's okay. You know, with such a passive opening that the guy was playing, maybe, maybe he could have tried it. You're not about those passive openings, Mike. No, no, no. I would have, I would have just, right, I would have gone right after, uh, well, bishop d3 is okay. But after e5, I would have played uh, d5 and kept going. But all right. So h3, you see this in a lot of high-level uh, Grandmaster games now. They always have to get their h3, h6 in. It's like mandatory, you know. They both decide we can take a move off to get look for our king, stop all the bishop pin nonsense. So you see that in a lot of uh, high-level chess now. Bishop e3. All right. Ooh, so okay. So Ashish, just like their board one, you know, the little delayed attack on move 10, just go for that F4 uh, stuff. I like this move right here. I, I think I would play F4 in this position. Yeah, I like it too. I like it too. So so does he have to take it? Or, or maybe he can play bishop to D6 here. Knight D7 looks too slow. Okay, but he, that's what he does play. Unbelievable. Well, you wouldn't want to take the f-pawn, right? I mean, because then you just got that bishop on f4 staring at the queen. Right. That then, looks dangerous to then, me. Then you, then you throw in a check. If if after pawn takes, bishop takes, you got the big check. So the king's under attack and the b-pawn is under attack. <sighs> so maybe... I mean, I, I would I would suspect that Ashish would have taken back with the uh, bishop, but he's got to look out for those uh, forks. All right, so f5. I like it. I like it. All right, so now, look, desperate times. I mean, this guy's already in desperate measures here. So he's just trying to get counterplay on the other side, but all the action and the king... The $9 billion king is on this side, so, oh, sheesh. Just let him, let him do his little attack. Well, I mean, if he plays a3, then the knight won't be under attack. So, so Ashish could just play queen to d2 here and then let him have his pitiful little b4 move and then just play knight d1, knight f2, and reroute this knight to the uh, king side and just let him do whatever he thinks he's doing on the queen side. But Ashish, too slow, too slow, too slow. One of the things I can say positive about Ashish right here is that one, uh, uh, early on, you want your attack to be pointed. You want your pawns to be pointed toward the opponent's king. You <laughs> want to push that way. And that's what he has here. And I like it. You know, what you were getting at was, uh, you know, putting the queen on d2. But still, now we have a bishop pinning the, uh, the bishop on e3 to the king. Right. So you can't do that immediately. Right, 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 right. So what now? 
So what now? What do we do now, Mike? Save me. What to do? What to do? Probably queen to d2 is probably the best here. Yep. Oh, look at this. He's just piling on, piling on now. Very sad state of affairs. Rook f3. Okay. Oh, nice rook lift. Takes. He's going to take back with the Oh. So, wow. So, wow. So, so Ashish's attack is all but vanished. It's fizzling, yeah. <laughs> fizzling. Knight c5, a beautiful move. I mean, you would never trade this knight, this beautiful knight on c5 for this uh, hopeless, hopeless bishop. Look at this bishop. Have you ever seen a more sadder uh, three-point piece? It's one of those times when the bishop is definitely not worth more than a knight. <laughs> right. Not, not even much more than a pawn, actually. Yeah, please, come on. Come get the bishop. And that's a good move. Well, he could still, she could still play b4 here, which it looks like he is going to play. But this is, this is, this is falling apart for Ashish here. So is he really going to play knight a2 or rook to b1? I would play rook to b1 in this position. Okay, good. And that's where we stand. So sad to say this guy has uh, definitely equalized, if not better, uh, Mr. Uh, Georgie, they got double uh, Georgies carrying their boards one and two, and um, all right. So uh, yeah, we... so anyway, let's go to let's go let's see if we got some good news with Alex Zhang, one of uh, the most improved players from uh, last time yes. around. Uh, Zhang has black against Nicolosi Shamatava. So even though uh, Alex Zhang is St. Louis N four. He moved up a board from uh, last year, so he's just using his same account. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, very easy to understand this naming scheme. Mike. <laughs> yeah. Kudos. But I don't want you want you to think, oh, why why are, is our fourth guy playing their third guy? You know. Right. But now we know. All right. Oh, Alex, why didn't you just castle? And and in this position, I know he might want to say, oh, well, book is d6 maybe, but d5 seems a little more ambitious because he hasn't been challenging with e4, c4. I probably would have just castled, but okay. It's, it's still all good for this guy. So, okay, so is he going to break with e5 or c5? Art, okay, we'll castle first. All right. e5 or c5, now it's now or never. Oh, so he... So he didn't take, and he didn't play d5. So now he can capture if need be. Instead, they get the h6 move in, which is fine. He gets out of the pin. Ooh, now the rook is on the same line as the queen. This is... This is... Not the best. Knight h5. What is he thinking about here? Well, it's hard to tell because he looks like uh, one of the Dementors from Harry Potter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Zoom in on laughs> he has no face. Uh, the blue, the blue it's a, we've, got a, we've got a lot of sunlight coming in. It's a, a nice, sunny, brisk day here in St. Louis. Yeah, we were supposed to have that shut. <laughs> we were supposed <laughs> to only have that open for like two minutes. It's like he has no face. In his eyes. <laughs> he is real. Very menacing. He is real. Very menacing. Okay. And so it now looks like white plays right into his hand here. This this I cannot believe. I, if I was white, I'd almost be tempted to play G4 and say, what you got? Because I just do not understand the threat here. But, uh, I mean, uh, look at this move. Who's his opponent? Nicolzi. Uh, I mean, he just just letting them trade that bishop for the knight. That, that confounds me, okay? Uh, I don't understand. Well, I mean, do you think that black can uh, initiate a, an attack on the H file? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I mean, that would take way too long. So you play king h7, rook h8, king g8. 
And then I don't know how I'm going to get my queen to the h file. All right. Uh, so he's almost tempting him to play d5 here. I would have much rather played my uh, bishop to g4. Oh, and now he's like, take my pawn. Obviously, we would never take the pawn on a2. Why not, Mike? Because of b3. Oh. <laughs> Even I could see that tactic. So Alex Zhang will not fall for it. And really, this guy really hasn't done anything to make the rook and the queen on the same line, you know, detriment to him. Oh, now bishop to g4. A little late, a little late, a little late. Queen e7. So threatening captures and then queen to d2 maybe. And that's where we are here. Uh, Alex is doing just fine. So so that that's some positive news for uh, Team St. Louis. <laughs> Yeah, 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 for All sure. Right, so let's go to... Uh... Okay, and next up is Aaron Lynn. Oh, okay. Oh, playing yes. white against Georgi Sartania, the only player to return to Zugdiddy's team this year. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. Well, he's a Georgie, so they, they like him. They like him. <laughs> Can't leave him off. Right, here we got a typical uh, Sicilian here. E5. I hate when people... Uh, like. I play the Sicilian a bunch. I never, ever in my life play e5. Why do you hate it so much? Because it leaves black with a backwards d pawn and a big hole on d5 where I can just jump my knight in. Like, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to trade my dark square bishop for this knight and hopefully just play, uh, you know, get my knight on d5 and just, just roll you over. But... Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Oh my gosh! Are you? Go oh, he's got to put his knight back on a3 now, huh? It's not ideal. So b5 should be played by black. Yes. Good. All right. So everybody sees the uh, sees the threat. Right. Ryan Chester would not want you to get forked. <laughs> yeah. A pawn fork is the most embarrassing fork of all because it's almost like you did it to yourself, you know. So what do you do? Do you just take it all? I know he's jumping in the d5. Good, good. Jump in. Jump. So bishop e7. So capture e7 probably. <laughs> well, I, so in this position, I really like capturing the bishop here. And then queen takes. You still have the pin on. And then just reroute this knight via B1, C3, D5, and then still have the pin going. Well, yeah, but what happens, I mean, after you play B1, then B4. B4 or we can do uh, Ashish's A3. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So all these trades did not help. Did not help Aaron Lynn let's get I, I, Let's get a closer shot of Aaron Lynn if we can. Because uh, he's actually in one of the uh, well-lit parts of the room upstairs. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, oh, see his reaction. Well, look, everyone's having a good time up there. <laughs> Ireland's <laughs> always having a good time. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, it's party, party, party. He's like Diddy on the move. So. C3, okay, so you can get his knight C2 to E3 to D5. Okay, we have a plan. We have a plan. Uh-oh. Queen's on the same line as the Rook again. They must have been really teaching that at Z the Zugdiddy school. F3 almost has to be played here, but we don't even want to play F3. We can play Bishop F3. Hopefully he plays Bishop F3. Okay, good, 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 good. And way better than F3. Oh, see, that's not a... Well, it is a threat because now he's got two men hitting uh, e4, and he's only got one defender. So queen to c2. Queen to c2, it looks good, but then he'll play rook to c8, you know, keeping the rook on the same line. So let's see what's actually played. And here we go. Oh, and he castles right into it. Puts everybody on. So everybody knows what move uh, black is going to play here. b4 is now the time. b4, yeah. yeah. c4. <laughs> and it's all falling apart for him. Well, but hey, he's just dancing. He doesn't even care. Is it hopeless, though? I mean, can we follow with b3 for white in next move to hold the pawn at bay? 
Any hope? Any chances? So C4. So let's see what we got. So let's see. How can a uh, black proceed here? He could play A5. So when B3 happens, see if we have anything more ambitious. I would just push the pawn, right? A5. That's that's what that's what I would do as as uh, black here, and, and we can uh, we can see how that one uh, proceeds. But yeah, so so I'm definitely liking uh, Zagdidi again. But Zagdidi came out to a big big start last year as well, and um, you know, we, Team St. Louis obviously prevailed. You know, Aaron Aaron unfortunately uh, got checkmated early on in the in the session, so. It's looking like it could go the same way. So let's go to, uh, is this? Okay, so. N5. Uh, so that would be uh, Aiden with the black pieces, and let's see what he can do. All right, so we have not seen this yet. All right, Roy Lopez, not the exchange variation, so you know how I feel about that. Well, that's okay. Uh, Mike, I have to double check yes. here something. I oh, want to make sure. sure I got the boards in order. So we just looked at Aaron Lynn. He I was the fourth board. He was the fourth board. Yes, yes, yes. And so mm -hmm. now we're on Aiden's game. Is this correct? Aiden is the fifth board. Correct, yes. Okay, I, my tabs were out of order. Apologies. Yes, yes, yes. But it's So Aiden Huang as black versus Maya Bekvaya. So Castle, Castle. I mean, they're probably... Still in a theory, I would imagine. Now they're just rerouting their knights. Nothing really spectacular here going on. I don't know if that was ideal for uh, Aiden. Was he afraid he was going to lose something? Because he just gave himself an isolated D pawn. It looks like he didn't really have to. B4, now he's back, going back. Knight F5. Ooh, okay, all right. Take that. Ooh, Bishop G5 looks good here. Oh, ooh, Knight F5's good too. F4, and now he's coming for him. All right, but he's got a nice little outpost there. So he attacks the knight. Probably Rook C8. Rook to d8. Rook to d8. All right. Well, yeah, you got it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it was um, the guy was threatening uh, bishop takes knight. You know, pawn takes or queen takes. It's removing the defender. So uh, good, good for uh, Aiden. He saw the saw the attack. Okay. So why didn't he move? The other rook. So, okay, so it maybe didn't want to remove the defender of f7, and maybe he wants to put his other rook on e8 instead of c8 in the future. All right, I can't, I can't uh, be mad about that. Lots of pressure coming on. Lots of pressure. And you know, this guy might have. Uh, is that still good? It's good right here. Okay, okay, uh, good. Um, he might actually have plans down the line of knight takes g7 here as well, as, as weird as it sounds. Because you can push the e-pawn? Yeah, e-pawn, oh. and then you never know what could happen. I mean, it doesn't work right now, but but just look out for plans of, of that kind of stuff. Now he throws in a, a meaningless check. So okay, so so a follow up here would be uh, knight to g4, possibly trying to get a little counter attack going with knight f2 check, followed by a potential smothered mate. You know the famous smothered mate if he plays king up, check, and no, it, it doesn't even well, work. You with need the, something it doesn't behind. even work with the with the yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, and now look at this. Now he puts the rook back on c8 so now he's he's doing what zagdudis did to us all all day long put that rook 
on, in, on the same line as the queen, get some discovered attacks going, and see what can happen. I notice a lot of these players are moving up and about through the boardroom. Um, are they allowed to talk to each other and ask for advice? Uh, no. The, the only time they are allowed to, uh, to ask for advice is to ask the team captain, Iris Zhao, if they should take a draw. Unlike last year, we are making them write down their result on a piece of paper so Iris can just take a quick glance at that, not at their board, but at, at just the result sheet, and then she can proceed from there whether or not they should take a draw. Based on the match score and not any position? Correct, yes. Okay. Yes. All right, let's head on to it. So, so, all right, so, so Aiden, and look, Aiden does have a, a lead in the time. Now the time is becoming a factor, even though they do have that 10-second increment. Uh, so he's getting a little, uh, a little momentum going. I would, I would assume just maybe move that queen to B1 or something here, or maybe counterattack with uh, A5. Well, let, let's see how it goes. All right, let's go to uh, the sixth board. This, this looks like it's winding down. I don't know if we want to go through the whole game or, uh, or yeah, just... Yeah, Selena Zhao versus Grigol Bekvaya. Uh, you know, this Bekvaya family, they fielded a few players this year and last year. I'm not sure exactly how they're related, probably siblings. But uh, Selena, yeah, already in an endgame. A few of the games started a little bit earlier on before we <laughs> got on the air. So uh, yeah, this some, is one of them. Some people found that found how to accept their challenge faster than others. That's why there's a discrepancy. Selena was one of the first ones and was telling everybody to shut up, basically. <laughs> you know, I don't care why, if you can find your buns or not. I'm playing, so just cool it, everybody. And Selena is a little under the weather today, so she's got a built-in excuse. It looks like she's pounding those sprites back, though, so maybe that'll put some more pep in her. Check. Oh, yes. Why did you allow that check? Why didn't when you check like that? Why didn't you just go to G two instead of allowing another check? That's not cool. Maybe she wants maybe she wants her king in the center. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see if it. I wonder if in this position actually. Oh, I guess I guess you can't because your knight is under attack. Okay. All right. So all right. So Selena's got that pass deep on, so she's wasting no time. You know, some people would be cautious and just use that as like you know our gold in an end game that pass deep on, but she just wants it right away. So let's see if it uh, and it it bit her, huh? She just lost it. Oh, all right. Bishop takes. Hey, look at that. You got a pin. You're going to win an exchange <laughs> here. Well, well, you gave up. She gave up an exchange, though, I think. Yeah. yeah but, yeah, to, but to get it right back. She gave up her, her precious D pawn. Okay. Hmm. Check. Uh, so, Knight F. Crying the king away, or trying to. Seven here. Right. So, now, Selena. Let's see if she's really good and see if she can play G4. Oh, no, good no, even move. better, even better. Putting the G pressure G4 on. G4 is a little slow anyway because black could correspond with G5. But who, I mean, with all these exchanges, oh, so she probably needs to prepare G4 with H4. And this, this is just almost unacceptable at her level is trading a pin piece taking a pin piece well why does she have to take it exactly exactly she doesn't why let why would you simmer, let think, yeah. right because look black all he can move is pawns right can't move the knight can't move the king or else you just lose can't move this rook or else rook takes check and then you lose the rook because the rook can't take back. So, right, Selena should have just taken the pawn. I can't believe. And now look, now now black can move any, well, can, can move the knight now. 
very, very disheartening that this uh, this exchange. But luckily, Black's just playing along, just letting <laughs> letting Selena take everything anyway. So that's nice. There you go. Now just push the other pawn and see what happens. So I would imagine uh, Selena will uh, protect this pawn somehow, or give a check first. Okay. So, okay, Selena, I mean, as uh, disheartening as uh, that one exchange was, you're still up by two pawns, but this is by no means just flat out winning, especially with her, you know, antsiness to push these pawns to, uh, to either, you know, queen or to oblivion. So hopefully uh, she'll get a queen out of one of these, but it's not looking... Uh, very good. So she's got to play probably bishop f3 or d3. Bishop d3 looks more ambitious because then you're uh, targeting this pawn. But with bishop f3, you see... Targeting the knight. Targeting the knight and protecting that queening square. So this is when we almost do need like a grandmaster or a chess engine to see which is better, bishop d3 or f3. While they look... You know, like, who cares? I'm protecting my pawn either way. Uh, it, it could go a long way to really deciding whether this game's a win or a draw. All right, so let's go to uh, number eight. Uh, or we're on seven, I believe. Newman Shen. Oh, Newman Shen. As Black against Nika Kimilaria. Okay, let's go to number seven. Okay. Totally opposite. Look, all the pawns are still on the board, and only one set of miners has been traded off. So Newman... So this is a D4 opening. We'll try to kind of buzz through uh, this as, you know, other games might be coming to, uh, to fruition. And it doesn't really look like there's much fireworks on this one. Yeah, 60. Now, this is, the, this is the actual last game that got started because Newman had a little trouble with his uh, getting his button going. But it looks like, uh, look, at, look at a huge time advantage, almost uh, 11 to 5, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's... That's good for Newman. Newman was up a bunch of time uh, last year, if you recall, um, but then lost in that uh, drawn uh, bishop ending, unfortunately. Okay, so hopefully uh, Newman will have a better result this year. Uh, it looks like he's doing just fine. Like, uh, nobody really has an advantage. The biggest advantage right now is the uh, time. All right, so let's go to Adi Panda, who we did not get to see last year. Uh, but he was victorious, and look at look at Adi's uh, time. This it, we might be able to see the <laughs> see the very end of this one. Yeah, uh, Adi is playing Dimitri Antelava. Um, this is our board eight, but remember, all of the games are weighted exactly the same, one point. So this is just as important as any other game. Adi probably is the most consistent club member to all of our classes. <laughs> I think he's at every single one. Yep, yep. And, and it shows because he plays the opening really, really well. So uh, look, look, look. Unlike other kids, well, we haven't really seen that too much, where they're trying to just crush each other right, right off the bat. You know, he plays uh, conservatively, gets castled, uh, and he's going to get his pieces out. Like his brother, he plays a3. In, in this position, I actually wish he would have played uh, h3 to prevent bishop to g4. But... But that's okay. So it all worked out in the end. He got some extra tempo. So now he plays d4. And Adi knows this opening well, so that's why he's got such a huge time advantage. Knight f5. He probably does watch a lot of uh, Ben Feingold videos as well, so got to get that knight f5 in there. Reroutes his bishop to... Uh, the h7 diagonal here. Wow. Tactics, 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 tactics. So. You can't take uh, back. Adi left the back row. <laughs> takes. Oh, no. But now he's got a, well, well, he's got a, a tactic of his own, but maybe. Uh, it's Pin City, Mike. Say. It's Pin it's City. Pin City. I love Pin City. Only slightly more fun than Spatula City. <laughs> That's specials. going way back, huh? Yeah. Is, that, is that like UHF? That's UHF. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Thank God someone got it. 
Smashler City, uh, that's a Weird Al Yankovic movie with uh, Kramer as the uh, janitor, the crazy janitor. Yeah. So check it out. Oh, now look at this. Big attack. Uh, is this is this uh, approaching the end? Because now we see the g pawn is still pinned here against the king in the corner. Yeah, so queen takes check. Okay, the but then you play knight h7, then we would play e5, and we'd have the bishop and the queen attacking if queen took the pawn. But obviously he plays queen to e6 here, so, so now we can't play that. But we might just play e5 anyway. Hmm. What about just like, come on, oh, he can't play f4 because of, uh, what about just king h1? King H1, and then F4, and just F5, and just kill this guy, you know? I'd be down for that. Yeah, that's, but Bishop D2, I, I know I know what the threat is. I can just take you, and then you can't take back, ha, ha, ha. Well, Mike, actually, you know, you were talking about King H1 to, to prep for F, but the F pawn is hanging. So then the bishop could just take straight away. Yeah. And there goes our attack. There it goes, there it goes. That's why Adi does not listen to me. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Good idea. Oh, but look at this triple pawn. Uh oh. Whenever you can give a man triple pawns, just do it. Oh no. Oh Let's no, see. Mike. Oh, we have a result. Uh, not yet, but it looks like it's imminent. Uh, Selena is in trouble against Griggle on board six. Um, the end game did not pan out for her, and this pawn is about to promote. The game may actually already be over. Um, it says. White resigned, black is victorious. All right, well, first blood goes to Grigol Bekvaya. And, and Selena had two extra pawns, remember? And she had it where the, their opponent couldn't even move. So what happened here? So in this position, we were saying bishop d3 or f3 chose neither. Oh, and she got forked. Well, this knight, knight here just straight up wins, right? It looks like it, yeah. He can do. But instead, he got the pawn, gets out of the way. What? So why did, in this position, should just play uh, rook back, I, and and I mean and just take the draw because okay, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes a four draw but, but so the king moved to d1 is that right and then knight takes bishop she she probably realized oh rook can't take rook because there's another fork there i see i was like oh the black rook is hanging it's not hanging the knight can reclaim with a, a fork on uh, c3 yeah okay so very 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 disheartening uh selena had a we can go back to the dream position one more time she had the dream, and she let him off the hook. In this position, never, ever take this rook. Just take the pawns, make it so this guy can never move, and you should be victorious. But got a little antsy, and uh, Griegel wins. Okay. Let's take a look back at board number one, Mike, because Irizaw is in time trouble against uh, the captain of the Zugdidi team, Georgi Kukalashvili. So what has happened since the last time we looked at this game? I think this is where we uh, went off. All right, g5. Knight protects the knight. Knight's coming into d5. Well, I mean, it looks like b5 unprotects the knight so we gotta watch out we gotta watch out Ooh, takes doubles the pawn but that's a nice double pawn now c4 well okay bishop takes pawn takes why would you break the chain here and now White has an advanced D pawn here. C. 
C4 is just crying to be played. But maybe, maybe White still wants that outpost for the knight. H6. I'm not a fan of H6. Why in the world are you opening opening lines for the uh, white attacker here? All right, but but luckily she got it through. <laughs> she got it through. Okay, now finally C4. Oh, okay. All right. So so uh, Iris has a nice uh, outpost for the knight on uh, D6 here. But mm, knight d6 should be instant, you know. Is this the live position? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you see uh, uh, Iris' opponent has a 7 to 1 advantage. It's going to be really tough for Iris to move. Basically, you could play rook e7, rook f8, and just move back and forth like that. But there's no real. Uh, there's no real plan here for Iris. She just wants to survive somehow, some way. It looks like St. Louis is doing a little bit better on the bottom boards than the top boards right now. <laughs> okay. Well, just give me a give me a winner, Ben. <laughs> give me a winner. <laughs> Let me try to cheer you up. Hey, look at this. Newman Shen, board number seven is black. He's got Nika on the uh, ropes time-wise. Uh, Ten to one ratio there. All right. King of three. All right, let's see. Let's see what what's happened since. Uh, so we got some trades in since since this last position here. This is about when we left off. I got a pawn. Got another pawn. <laughs> so it literally looked like he really got a lot going. And then yeah, you're up trade. Knight takes pawn. Bishop check. Oh, he could even block with uh, Bishop B5 here, and he does. All right, good job. Eight. Hey, well, just move. Uh, whatever you want to do. Yep. I would not play that. Okay, that's the check I would play. All right. So, uh, let's see. All right, Newman can still get castled, but right. I, not a, I'm not a big fan of castling in endgame. I would probably play in this position, maybe just bishop. Well, so this knight, Knight eight, well, four. what I'm thinking is that the B file is controlled by white right now. So I just have this compulsion to get the H rook out if I'm black. So if I'm not going to castle because the king is, you know, shouldn't be hiding away in the corner uh, in the end game, maybe I want to bring the king up to D7 or E7. I, 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 I mean, ideally, I want to play, yeah. So this is probably the way to go because if he plays rook to uh, B... B7 right now, I have to do the Ben Feingold trick where I'll uh, I'll just move my uh, bishop or knight back, and it's now it's trapped. It's trapped on B7. You see, if, if, if he plays rook to B7, I can just put either my bishop or my knight there. Oh, and now he's, he's, he's done. He's done. All right, so now Newman should just take the B8, move his king to D7, put his other rook on C8, and lights out. You're done. So this is it. Just play rook to b8. Or you can even play king d7 now. But yeah, all right, great. Rook to b8. All right, so so Newman. Newman is going to win this game. I. All right, so this is good. All right, what, what else we got? What else we got? Uh, let's look at Aaron Sunboy. All right, Aaron. Aaron Lynn on board number four. Uh, he's playing a straight-up blitz game right now, two minutes to three minutes <laughs> against Sartania. All right, so Aaron had white. Oh, remember last time we, we checked in, he just castled into the, uh, into the attack. <laughs> okay, and of course he played b4, c4. Okay, we saw this. All right, so now we, at least he got off the uh, file there. a5, which was I was recommending. Knight d5, knight takes, pawn takes. Okay, now I'm uneasy. I wasn't before. Uh oh. I'm uneasy. I don't like this. And Aaron is not smiling for the first time in his life either. So that's always a bad sign. It looks a little aloof, huh? Well, you got to think that maybe e4 is coming from black. Okay. 
Ooh, he's, he gets his own little attack going. Um. Okay, so Wait. bishop e4. Bishop e4 has bishop to be Bishop e4 has to be played. Why? F oh, after queen takes. Why didn't they instantly play queen takes f2? Well, okay, but he wants to prepare it. See, in this position, why not just come down and just take it? I'm looking for a way for white to make black pay with the rooks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, but, just take the check. I don't know. Okay, so let's say he does play queen or rook to f1. Well, can, we'll you, get, can you move the pieces? Uh, are you, are you uh, able to do I, it? I can't no? move the pieces. So rook g2, so he protects it. So this is almost anybody's game now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, you know, he didn't play a5 right away, uh, this gentleman, uh, Georgie. I should have guessed that. Uh, a, a5, a4, you know, to prevent uh, any kind of b3 and just try to try to win like that. So now, so now... He should reroute his rook to probably c8 here. And then if white plays b3, play a4, and you still have some chances. So white's plan is probably to double up on the g-file here, and uh, Aaron's got some chances. <laughs> if he cares. <laughs> yeah. Now, can you uh, pre-move on this uh, on this platform on Lee Chess? I don't see why not. If you can pre-move in a one-minute game, you can pre-move in a rapid game. Okay, well, there you go. I, admittedly, I don't play on Lee Chess too much, but I know that it's picking up steam. And, I mean, uh, just like two years ago, man, like Lee Chess was just like, oh, yeah, I play on Lee Chess. What's that? Oh, that's that website. It's kind of like gray, you know. It has some features. It's kind of cool. And now Lee Chess is like, all the rage, like everyone's playing on Lee Chess. So very cool for them. And like everything is free, so you should definitely check that out if you haven't checked out leechess.org. B3, yep. All right, here they are blitzing out some moves. <laughs> the rook on C5 is a little bit useless right now, would you agree? Can we put that somewhere? Uh, we can play A5 here as, as black, try to make make it look not so useless. I mean, a5 is just screaming to be played in that position. Instead, he's going to reroute his uh, rook to f7. So, okay. You mean a4. a4 played, yeah. Yeah, black should have played a4 in this position, targeting the b-pawn. And then, obviously, if it takes, I get the c-pawn. Well, I don't expect him to take. Right, no and then take. Aaron might have played king to b1. And then, then you have an option of checking or uh, taking. So it looks like he's just going to double his rooks, you know, to protect this pawn here. Okay. Oh, you want some good news, Mike? You All want right, some let's good get news? Some news. Newman Shen, board seven. Let's do it. Uh, as uh, Black, he is in the driver's seat. He's tying up his opponent. Nika looks good. One, two, three, four, five pawns to three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we almost have this one in the uh, books. Good job for uh, And it's almost mate. Look at this. Because if that knight moves, then rook e6, uh, that's mate, isn't it? Yep. And you can't even sacrifice your rook for the... Uh, it's going for check. Oh, but that got rid of the, uh, the oh, threat okay, because okay. now king to d4 is an issue. But let's see. So after king to b5... Oh, after king to b5, now he's got the rook check. But I don't Ooh. even think that's very good. Because then I just play king to c. King to b6, and now both your pieces are under attack. Uh, we have a result. Zugdidi number five, uh, Aiden Huang's opponent, has flagged. And so that means that St. Louis gets its first point as Aiden Huang beats Maya Bikvaya. So good job, Aiden. Aiden the winner.
Second year in a row, Aiden the winner. <laughs> it comes to play in these team competitions. Good job. All Good right. Job. Right now, the score, as you can see right there, Team USA, the St. Louis Chess Club, won to Zugdiddy Chess School, won. The first of four and a half is the winning team. 1-1. One, one. All right. Good Good job. Good job, Aiden. Good job, Aiden. Okay, so let, can we go back to uh, Newman's game for yep. just a moment? We want to see a win. We want to see a win. I feel like I, I thought we might be close. The knight is out of the way, though. There's no mate it looks like anymore. And, um, okay, so so Newman says, let's trade rooks, and then I'll force my opponent to trade his knight for the b pawn. Mm. Is it a solid idea? I would have just gone all the way to, uh, to there and just won the g pawn, and that way I have a past h pawn. But maybe he was afraid of something like rook to c8 followed by rook to f8. So mm -hmm. if he can say, oh, well, okay, so now he forces the rook trade, right? Because, cause, right, if you play rook to d4, mm -hmm. you get checkmated, remember? So. Yes. All right, yes. so let's see. So, so remember, Selena, she was a little uh, anxious pushing all those pawns. So let's see if uh, if Newman can make these guys uh, pay off into a queen. All right, we have some news uh, once again with Zug Diddy in the driver's seat on board three, a checkmate on the board as Alex Zhang falls to Nicolosi Shamataba. Checkmate in the corner. Look at that. Checkmate in the corner. Mm -mm. Down a. Where's that bishop going? Where was that bishop going? A nice motif by uh, Nicolucci, making it one to two. Team Zagdiddy. And once again, if you're watching these games on Lee Chess or you see the clocks right there, with each move they do gain 10 seconds. It's a 10 second increment. They started with 25 minutes. So you could play on this increment, okay? You could be down to one second then hop on <laughs> up to 11. As long as you don't hit zero, you're going to be okay. Well, let's see what Aaron uh, Sunboy was up to again. We was... have another result uh -oh. on board eight. The game between Adi Panda and Dimitri Antilava is drawn, our first draw of the day. Zogdidi leads two and a half to one and a half. Yeah, now, now Zogdidi might just be in draw mode because a draw, draw on each board produces a win for them. You get to four and a half, you're the winner. So we got one and a half, two and a half. Okay, so as I'm just skimming for results, it's got all these tabs open. So Aaron has 49 seconds and looks like he's got everything under wraps here. So this should be a draw. It's, I mean, it, I don't see how either side can really break through here. I mean, the first thing I looked at was pushing the C pawn to try to break through with D. Uh, but, it, yeah, it doesn't look sustainable, really. Right, right, right. Because you've got no, no rooks really backing it up. Your rooks are tied down to your H and F pawns. You, the last thing you want to do is give the man a pawn and then tie your rooks down to another pawn. So, so hopefully Aaron can just move king E2, king E3, king E2, king E3, king E2, king E3, and... Uh, uh, and just call it a day. But th this does the same thing where it's not allowing the rook get, getting the D1. So it's all the same. And, and look at that draw. Huh? It is a draw right there. So, yeah, so, so they are point. in draw mode right now. They are in draw mode. So that means we are 3 to 2, Zagdiddy in the lead, right? Right. So all they need is one more win, and they can't lose. Okay. <laughs> and the best we can hope for is a. Uh, is a draw. There's well, a but, but a match, we do match have draw. we do have a a fake point in Newman Chen though. What do you that, mean a fake point? Well, I'm I'm counting that already. Oh, okay. 
So, it, so what is it, that saying? Don't count the chickens before they hatch. <laughs> yeah. uh, losers, losers say that. All right, you gotta, you gotta know when when you gotta win. All right. Eight, three games in progress. Ooh. I mean, uh, I would. Uh, so let's see. This is uh, oh, this, board two is board two is over. Board two is over. Black wins. Black has checkmated white on board two, and that means that Georgi Nakopia has defeated Ashish Panda. All right, but we got the scores wrong last year, so God only knows what the real score is. We, you never know. You never. We might be. We might already have won this match. Do the kids look happy? Do the kids look sad? I mean, last year we announced a win for Zagdidi before we found out. Hey, St. Louis wins. Well, right now it looks like St. Louis can no longer win because uh, Zagdidi has achieved four points. So the best St. Louis can do, it appears is tie the match, match draw. So, okay, so so Iris Iris came through really big with a big win last year. Hopefully okay. she knows, as the team captain, she should know what the score is. And um, I don't know how, how Iris can win this game today. So White has the two passed pawns, and here they come. And obviously, With only have, 15 seconds also. Oh no. I want to bishop back. Bishop back. And just pray. Iris down ticking. Oh, okay, wait. she makes a move. Bishop e4. This could be the end of us. So we still have a pizza party? <laughs> I don't know. Wasn't the, isn't the, the pizza party is for the winning winning team? <laughs> right, yeah. We're just <laughs> we ship only the take pizzas the winners out to the Diddy, pizza yeah. party. It'll get there at some point. Oh, no. Yeah, this doesn't look good for St. Louis. You know the pressure's got to be on Iris, but... Here comes the check to seal the deal. <sighs> that does it. Fork, fork, big fork. Hey, might as well play to mate, right? Yep. No yep. reason to resign. Yep, that, uh, mouse slips. It happens. Uh, but that's <laughs> not looking good. <laughs> and... Iris is not happy. Look at she's just resigned, and uh, that's that's the walk off Homer right there. Zugdiddy <laughs> yeah, yeah. has achieved five points. Five to two is the live score, and there is still one game remaining. Let's head on over to our board seven with Newman Shen, as he his game continues against Nika. Newman has the black pieces, and he looks like we'll, we'll get our consolation. Victory. Right. Well, you never know. This, this, this could clinch the match for us. You never know. <laughs> Let's just hold out hope. It strongly <laughs> appears that Zugdiddy is leading 5-2. to two. Um, If you weren't watching last year, we were wrong. I think <laughs> Iris came in and he was like, what? Uh, we won. Yeah, we got both Ashish's and Adi's uh, mistaken last year, so... Yeah. You never know. Now, this guy has achieved the stalemate position. Why did he didn't go to the... Oh, because if you go to the corner, you get made it. All right. Newman's okay. happy, at least. Well, that does it. All of the games have ended. The final match score, it, we want to congratulate Zugdiddy. <laughs> Five to three. <laughs> they have, they sent their best. They regained their composure after last year. We fielded a new team, mostly, and uh, took our tried-and-true USA Chess Club uh, members to town. Mike, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, we got the last victory. Unfortunately, April Fools has come and gone, so I'm thinking this score is actually going to hold up this year, unfortunately, <laughs> for better or for worse. Uh, Selena had that nice position and couldn't get the, uh, the win or the draw. That one really hurt us. Well, I'd like to uh, talk with our team captain here, if possible. Hopefully, we'll get Ira Zhao down here in the studio, or one of our members to give us some kind of insight into what's going on up there. Because one thing I noticed, all of those players on our team are friends. Yes. And they're all very happy, and, and at least the atmosphere is lively up in the room, you know? Right. Um, the Zagdidi team is playing in a hotel. Yeah, in Georgia. Lug luxury. Hotel. Yeah, luxury. I wonder, <laughs> but but the question is, are they friends? Doesn't really matter because they had the better uh, <laughs> result today, I guess. Yeah. So. Well, it is a that. chess school. It's like Diddy Chess School. So I would imagine there's some uh, camaraderie, uh, maybe, maybe rivals, but still come together as team play and play as a team. Because you saw at the end, you know, they were kind of in draw mode in the uh, in the closer competitions and uh, got the two draws. And that's the difference, you know, if they would have lost that, whole different story. 
Uh, I've been informed that our good correspondent, Dennis LaRue, don't worry, he's not a part of the show today. He is being sent to go get the captain, Ira Zhao, who, uh, you know, a lot of times we don't like to interview the person who has lost because it's so crushing. Right. It's like, tell us about your loss. No one wants to do that. But today, we're going to have to do that. Um, He's the captain, so win I, or lose, the captain's got to take the blame. I think that, the glory. yeah, we were going to do that no matter what. But while we're waiting for our captain of the St. Louis team, big congratulations to the Zugdidi Chess School. Yep. Hey, we'll do it again next year. The rubber match, huh? Yeah, love it. Love it. <laughs> uh, coming up next for the St. Louis Chess Club broadcast, we have a couple of big event events that you should know about. First of all, we're having the St. Louis Norm Congress. It's six days of a chess tournament, two fields actually going on. We're going to have a Grandmaster Norm section and an International Master Norm section. These tournaments have up-and-coming names in them, where if a player achieves a certain performance, say six and a half out of a possible, what is it, nine, nine uh, then they get a Grandmaster Norm. You get three norms, you achieve a certain rating, Boom, you're a grandmaster. That's how it happens. The age-old question, how do you become a grandmaster? Right. So you should watch the St. Louis Norm Congress and find out. It runs from May 16th to May the 21st. I'll have the honor of hosting along with Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman for the very first time. And we'll be bringing abbreviated coverage to you on the St. Louis Chess Club YouTube channel and uschesschamps.com. Once again, that begins on May 16th and it runs through the 21st. So you never know what you're going to see at the Norm Congress, and not everybody always achieves, uh, not someone always achieves a Norm in these tournaments, but we will have prizes, we will have a champion of the Norm Congress regardless. Yep, yep, and, and the players love, love this because all they have to do is get the score. They don't have to worry about anything else, like, oh, who am I going to play in this round? The pairings are already made. Round robin. They, they, know, they know what color they're going to get for each round. They know uh, if they perform, all they have to do is hit that score and you get a norm. You know, they don't have to worry about who, you don't know, how many federation players I'm going to play or anything. It's all just set out for them to achieve, uh, achieve their desired norm. Yeah, and so that's going to be a lot of fun. The St. Louis Chess Club has two norm tournaments each year. We have the Norm Congress in the first part of the year, and then the Invitational, we call it, in the later part of the year. And uh, we'll be broadcasting that uh, later on this year as well. Well, right now we do have our St. Louis team captain in the studio, so we're going to be right back uh, in just a moment with the captain, Iris Zhao.
right, welcome back. We're here with uh, Team Captain Ira Zhao, and everybody wants to know the answer to this question. What was the result of the uh, match today? Well, we lost. Oh, uh, so it's official, huh? It's official. <laughs> Shucks. So we didn't get, like, all the results wrong. All the bad news was actually bad news for us. All right. You want to briefly uh, go over uh, your match as a team captain of the uh, St. Louis Archbishops? I know what it's like to be on the, uh, the losing end of... Uh, of a big, big match, and uh, it's never fun, never fun. But guess what? There's always next year. We're going back to the Final Four to play Armenia, and who knows? Maybe next year we can lead our team back against uh, Zugdidi and get the yeah. job done, okay? So, yeah, we won the World Championship last year. We lost last year, and now, you know, we'll be all right. So, all right, so let's check it out. You had the uh, black pieces in this game, and you start with the Sicilian. Yeah, so... This is kind of like a setup that I learned, and I basically played against like all the close Sicilians, which may or may not be uh, not the best. Yeah. But yeah, so I was uh, a little criti criticized of this move. Well, no, it's a setup, right? Because but it's a setup. It's, a setup. it's <laughs> you, you want to take control of the D four square, and also. In the normal setups where you play like e6 and d5 instead of e5 and d6, then oftentimes f4, f5 is really annoying, but here it's harder to do. Just the drawback is, you know, d5 becomes weak and. Right. Yeah. And it gets f4 in any way, and I think it. Yeah, knight h3 was a weird move, but I don't know why he didn't just play knight e2, <laughs> I guess. Right, yeah, his knight would look a lot, lot better on that square. But all right, I guess he's got plans. So here I thought it was just fine. Like, I liked my position. You know, I have eventual, I can expand on the queen side, a6, b5, or play f5. And then he played this g4 move, and I was like, what's going on? Yeah, I guess he wants to push f5. Yeah, so basically I either have to take on f4 or play f5, and I couldn't get f5 to work the way I wanted it to. It might be okay, but I felt that when all the things were traded off, it should favor white. So I just took this. And here, um, so I spent a long time. Instead of knight e5, I really wanted to play d5. Oh, well. But the thing was, I wasn't sure, like, um, well, you got one, two, one, two, three. Well, I know, I I know, I can, I can do that. Yeah. Just let's say he does a normal move. He's not going to take because I think that's okay. I think the most, the problem is, let's say he plays a normal move like queen d two. Then what's my next move? Because push it. <laughs> push it. Well, I don't really want that pawn there because then he might play rookie one e five ninety four and I don't have my queen side expansion is probably slower than his and the, and if i take on e4 once his knight gets to e4 i think it becomes really annoying because again f6 the f6 square is weak just like it normally is but i think so but I, knowing what happened in the game i should have played d5 at some point maybe knight e5 was okay and then next move i should have played d5 all right Yep. Continue. Well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the dream of every uh, Sicilian player is to get uh, D5 in. in. Yeah. Yep. So if they let you, so you might as G5, well. So G5, yeah. See, now, like, F6 is a really big hole, which is, that's why I was really reluctant to play D5, because then it, he has an E4 square to get in. Mm -hmm. But Instead you're just Knight C6 in. is probably bad, because after Knight D5, I started to realize that, Mm, I don't really know what to do with my <laughs> position. Just, just expand the expand Yeah, but the thing is, it doesn't really go anywhere. And that says you're doing okay. Knight D1. Knight D1, I don't know. I don't know about Knight D1. I wasn't, every move I thought um, he would play Knight of 6 and sack upon, like go back. E like after A5 maybe. After a five, like so every move, I thought he. I don't know how good it is, but. And then just oh, because. Then bishop h six. And I move my rook, and then knight g four, 
And so I have to, I probably have to play bishop takes g4, rook takes f6, bishop takes d1, rook takes d1. And he has the two bishops and my d6 pawn is hanging and I just thought, this is so bad. Like, maybe it's not as bad as I thought, but it's definitely not something I want to play. Okay, so you decide to, uh, to capture but instead. yeah, he. I wasn't sure how to avoid it. So, oh, so but he just he, but wanted he, to get rid of the threat. Yeah, he he never really did it. So, but the thing was, that's why I spent a lot of time because I was really worried he was going to do that. And after knight d one, I realized like knight f six is going to be really strong in this move. So I kind of had to. <laughs> okay, but now he's got that e four square that you were. Yeah, but since he played knight d one, if he goes back, he wastes some time, and I have enough time to play like knight f5, and maybe my pieces can start to get active. Okay. That was my idea. Here, and so then he I started. Yeah, I started getting low on time, and I wasn't sure what to do. Um, rook c1 is probably rook c8 is probably really bad. So he takes. Wait, can you go back? Sure. After knight e3, I think if I had more time, I would have considered like knight of five more because i do get the double pawns but at least my pieces start to become active no well, that's what the computer wants you to play so yeah so it just takes, looks kind of funny it looks weird but i think if i had more time to evaluate it i would have realized the other option was way worse and this is <laughs> probably my only hope because rook c8 i was afraid he would play d4 right so that's why I, I wanted to give my knight a square. Oh yeah. But then when he did this, I was like, oh no. Yeah. Because if I play bishop takes, then knight g4 and. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted you to play, because in the in the actual game now he's got this d pawn. But the, okay, once I put a knight on d6, his d pawn isn't going anywhere. Yeah. Which yeah, that was a good. I thought I thought I had no choice because if I had played bishop takes and then knight g4, and then bishop g7. He can choose to play knight f6 now or later, and then he's gonna probably going to uh, take with the pawn. And Yeah, this, this doesn't look very good for yeah. you. Okay, yeah, I think it chose wisely then. So then, um, yeah, bishop b4 I thought was really annoying because now my knight's never getting to f5. <laughs> and so I got down to like a minute, and I decided h6 was like my last chance. Because he was going to play knight g4, knight f6. I had to do something. Okay. I was wondering why you were playing h6 here. But it, it kind of lets you off the hook, I H6 thought. h6 or h5, I wasn't sure. But after, okay, after h6, he definitely should have taken. Right. And yeah, I agreed. But now, because after h4, h5, now his knight is, it's really hard for him to get to f6. And so he has more space, but I don't know, like, what he's going to, and he's more active piece, but I don't know what he's going to do about it. Like, once I put my knight on d6, the thing is with increment, I can make these move really fast and I get more time to think. Right, yeah. Yeah, so it looks like, yeah, you Yeah, like you're doing. the thing was, I didn't want to take a draw because I think we were losing the match at that point. Right, but it's going to be really tough. It's really for hard. You to win this. <laughs> yeah, almost so impossible, I was trying to really. infiltrate with my queen somehow yes, yes. and he let me which i thought was surprising oh, like i let i let him take a pawn but i knew it was a risk but i had to take that risk right yeah we well, have yeah, in team competitions yeah you got to think for the uh, greater good and i was really surprised he didn't take my pawn on a5 yeah right yeah what's he afraid of check i think he didn't like that i could check and then play e4 and suddenly my bishop comes active his king is kind of weak which I guess makes sense. Oh, interesting. So uh, he does have a, a tactic here, though, it looks like. If you push here, can uh, he just come Rook down? takes f7? Well, it looks Maybe. Like, it looks like they don't even care. Because um, <laughs> it's just like the computer is like, fine, yeah, who cares? The, the problem is <laughs> my e-pawn is going really fast now. Right. Because before it was blockaded, and once you let me get out then I think all three results are possible well maybe maybe maybe, maybe uh, uh Georgie uh, their, their team captain made the, the right the right decision yeah. here and just retreated back 
And the thing was, I, I think at some point I could have just sat and waited, but I kind of misevaluated what I was trying to do, and also I tried too hard to win. I it, think I should have just sat and taken it. It looks job. like the, uh, the Zugdidi team really knew the, uh, the match situation because as soon as they got up uh, two to one, they started taking draws, draws on yeah. the other board. So I'm sure Georgie knew that a, a draw would probably clinch this match. So so that's why he's just content with. Yeah, and that was really bad because what I failed to realize is that at some point he's going to defend his D pawn and play C5, and I'm going to be in big trouble. Yeah, and then he's got the two monsters coming at you. Yeah. Yeah, like, then, this is yeah. just so bad. Yep. So you put up a heck of a fight, you know, and uh, and uh, good for you for uh, trying to fight on for the win and what looked like a, you know, a drawn or even losing position, but you knew the you knew the, uh, the game score, the match score, and you know, wanted to... Uh, yeah, but the thing was, we were really close to winning this match because... Um, my sister yeah, had a win want, she had a winning position and uh, then she messed it up. Yeah, well, too bad for uh, Team St. Louis. We're gonna go to break and then put a bow on the episode. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back as we close the show. Cummer's had a long day, apparently. <laughs> uh, ben Simon and Mike Cummer here at the mat, the return match on the internet as Today in Chess presents St. Louis versus Zugdiddy. We want to congratulate the Zugdiddy Chess School because they did pull it out 5-3, to three, as we just heard from <laughs> it's an uh, official. Yeah, it's official. It's official. <laughs> it's 100 percent official. No foolies. Um, and when we talked about the St. Louis Norm Congress coming up here as our next uh, event that's semi-local, I guess. Uh, the next broadcast from around the world will actually be before that, and it's the first leg of the 2019 Grand Chess Tour, the biggest one yet. This year, there's going to be 12 members on this tour, uh, 12 competitors in Cote d'Ivoire, Abidjan, for uh, viewers of last year. You remember we did do this tournament with 10 of Africa's best players in Cote d'Ivoire, and it turned out so good, they put it on the Grand Chess Tour. Now, Basim Amin, the best player in Africa, uh, Egypt's number one by far, he will still be in this event as a wild card, but he'll be joined by the likes of Magnus Carlsen, last year's Grand Chess, Cho Grand Chess Tour champion, Hikaru Nakamura, MVL, Ding Laren, Wesley So, and more. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be several days of Rapid and Blitz, the first leg of the Grand Chess Tour. Let's see who's going to... Uh, get the first yeah. Unfortunately, advantage. It corresponds with the uh, Pro Chess League's finals oh, in man. Uh, San Francisco. So guess guess who can't play in San Francisco Ooh. to help the Archbishops out? Oh. Grandmaster Wesley So, the 2017 MVP of the uh, league. Man, this chess calendar is just packed, man. Yeah. you gotta, you got to pick <laughs> and choose, huh? Yeah. So uh, for more information on that, be sure to check out grandchesstour.org. Well, today's been a good time, uh, even though it wasn't the result that we had hoped for. But when you lay it on the line, you got to be prepared to lose. I know you're a betting man, Mike Cummer. Hopefully, you didn't lose a lot of money today. That'd be very tragic. No, 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 no. I, I never <laughs> bet on. I never bet on uh, things that I'm kind of involved in. I would never do that. Got a got an important question. Of course, I'm joking. But uh, important question. Zugdiddy changed up nearly their entire roster this year, and they did 
a good thing. They won. Our team, as I've said, has so much camaraderie, uh, and they were victorious last year. Do you think you want to change it up for next year, or you want to field the same team knowing that they know what they, they're facing? Well, I mean, we could have invited Luke Yi, uh, everybody's favorite, Arjun, uh, Ed Jern, Perry. Arjun, for Arjun, those of you yeah, Arjun. who know his real name. So, so maybe, well, I, I, li I like the team we have. No substitutions necessary. As long as they're all available at a, at a, at a date we can arrive on next year, we're bringing the whole team back. You know, spectacular. It's good to hear, and I'm sure they're happy to hear it, uh, barring any uh, scheduling conflicts. So I want to give a shout-out to the world's greatest production B team. Streaming the show today, the technical director, Danny Machuca. Audio and graphics is Isaac Schrantz. We want to thank Dennis LaRue from the street, getting our special guest in here. Oh, hey, he's not and, too far away right now. And getting the pizza, huh? He's, he's got pizza. Upstairs, right? uh, oh. No. Uh, I'm just downstairs. Okay. Downstairs. Oh, downstairs. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> he's a good guy, uh, Dennis LaRue. Yep, yep. Well, anyway, uh, until next time we see you for the Grand Chess Tour, maybe alternate language, and St. Louis Norm Congress in May. He's the most entertaining man in chess, Mike Comer. My name is Ben Simon, and we say so long from the Show Me State.